Hi guys, good evening. Um, so day five of the video challenge. So today I want to talk about anxiety and some things that I've learned about anxiety. And the first thing that I've learned about anxiety is that I've noticed patterns in my in myself as well as in the people that I care for um, of personality types that tend to be more anxious. Um, and and so what I've noticed is people who are have very low self-worth, um, people who are people pleasers, um, perfectionists, they have higher um, levels of anxiety than other personality types. And essentially, you know, with anxiety, we're grasping for control. And it's like grasping at sand that's coming through your fingers. You know, the more sand that falls through the fingers, the tighter you're grasping and you're, and the sand's falling through, um, falling through more quickly, which perpetuates that anxiety and that feeling. The second thing that I've really noticed about anxiety is that uh, most people can't identify in the beginning that they actually have anxiety. Most people assume that anxiety is this, you know, this deep-seated worry. And, you know, when you say, you know, are you anxious? Most people can't really an an answer what that is. But when I ask them a series of questions, when I ask them, you know, how well do you sleep at night? Most people with really bad anxiety will say, you know, I have a hard time falling asleep because my mind doesn't shut off. Or I wake up frequently and I just, my mind doesn't shut off. They'll tell me that, you know, they socially isolate. So the things that they were interested in before, they kind of pull back because uh, they want greater control. So they pull back from especially um, things that they feel like they can't have control over. They... Um, some people have panic attacks, so they'll tell me, you know, I get short of breath, I feel clammy, I feel like I'm having chest pain, I don't know if I'm having a heart attack. Um, they'll tell me their concentration is poor. Some people have increased appetite, some people have decreased appetite. But the number one thing that is profound is irritability. And some people might not really even recognize it themselves, but their partners recognize it. Their loved ones recognize it. They, they're the one, because they're the ones that brunt the wrath of that irritability. They're the ones that, um, you know, you feel it. So irritability is just losing it and being upset about things that we normally have control over, um, or things that we normally, it wouldn't bother us. Or our little one spills some milk on the floor and we lose it. Um, or, you know, we misplace our keys or something very sim simple and trivial. So essentially, the best analogy I can give for, you know, the difference between anxiety and depression is anxiety, We the mind throws us into the future. You know, we have a bad day and we automatically, our thought process goes to, I'm a bad mom, I'm a bad person, I'm a bad, I'm never going to amount to anything. And it throws us in the future and there's a lot of fear associated with that. Whereas with depression, we're stuck in the past. Um, we're, we're mulling over things and we're saying, what if, what if this happened or I didn't, you know, and really stuck in the past. Something that I've learned kind of recently and I never really put the two together was that, having an anxiety disorder, I lived in fear for most of my adult life. Um, my decisions were based on fear. Um, and so it, it enabled me to not be able to be connected with my, my intuition. Um, and really to be able to speak my truth and be grounded within who I am and follow my life purpose because I was making decisions based on fear. And you know, basically we, we live in two realms. We either live in fear or we are in love, right? And so, you know, I ask you to kind of think about when you're making decisions, are you coming from a place of fear or are you coming from a place of love? When we think about fear, I automatically think about the fight or flight response that, you know, biologically happens when we're scared. You know, if we're being chased by a bear, the first thing that happens biologically is our blood flow 
rushes from our brain, goes to our heart and our lungs and our muscles so that we can run, so we can flee or fight whatever is we're up against. When that happens, we our brain has no blood flow. We can't make rational decisions. We can't be thoughtful. Um, and so we, we feel in our body. So the biggest things that I've learned because of my anxiety disorder is one, that mental health illness is not a personal failure. And despite working in healthcare and taking care of people with mental health disorders, which I have an immense compassion for um, and empathy, I felt like I have, and I felt like I had a person, it was a personal failure. I should have known better. I'm a healthcare worker. I have resources. I'm an intelligent woman. Um, I have a toolbox. I have a toolbox of things that I do. Um, you know, to help me with my anxiety, breathing and yoga and meditation and, and a, a variety of other things, self-care. And so um, in January, when I started my new job, I had an exacerbation of my anxiety. Um, and it was amazing to me how much I allowed myself to suffer and how little self-compassion I showed myself. And I, and I see this in my patients. We show ourselves such, so, so, so little self-compassion. We have such high expectations of ourselves to achieve and to be people who are, you know, these superhumans and we're not superhuman. So I, I ask you to think about where are you being unkind to yourself? Where can you show yourself a little bit of compassion? The other thing that I have learned is that that little voice in my head, that's ego. That's, that's an, an, a, I, sometimes I call it my saboteur. That little voice is what makes up stories and drama, which skews things, which makes assumptions, that makes me paranoid about, say, interactions with other people. What did they think of me? Did I talk too much? Did I, was I too much? Oh, they looked at me funny, they must not like me. We make up these stories, this fiction that we believe and it perpetuates the fear and it perpetuates the anxiety. And it's really important for me, I always say, once I'm in my head, I'm in a really dangerous place um, because that that dialogue, um, we believe it and it's not true. And and but when we can identify those fears and identify those hot thoughts and identify that that dialogue and stop it and say, is that true? Would people really think that of me? Um, you know, we're more much more in connection. Um and, and then we stop the unnecessary suffering. It's easier said than done. I'm not saying that it's easy. I'm also saying that, you know, certainly anxiety can be managed, um, but a lot of people require medication and there's no shame in that. Uh, and the reason why I talk about my own struggles with anxiety and mental health is because I think that as healthcare providers, um, you know, we suffer greatly with it. Um, but we don't share with our patients. And so people make assumptions about people with mental health issues that they are homeless and jobless and can't function. I'm a very highly functioning pe person and you wouldn't on the outside notice um, or know. Um, I ha I'm really good at having a mask. Um, and that's part of the reason why my, my, this group is called Unmask and Evolve because I think it's important that we really become vulnerable and naked um, and really look inward. Um, if we want any significant change in our lives, we can't point the finger at the people that are around us. We have to look in and that's not easy. Um, and in my journey, I've had to look in and look at my faults and look at where, because the reality is, is the only thing we can change is ourselves. So, the two questions I ask to you guys to review and, and put comments in is, you know, where are you being unkind to yourself? And, you know, who do you need to forgive? Um, and, you know, are you living coming, coming, are you living in fear? Or are you, are you 
um, living in a place of love. So I'd love to hear your thoughts. I want to thank everybody for all their comments and I will I will start responding to some of them. Um, I'm just overwhelmed by how many people are watching and commenting and I'm really, um, really thankful. So thanks again. Thanks for watching. Sorry for that this, this video was a little bit longer than I intended, um, but I hope you got something out of it. And if you're struggling with anxiety, you're not alone. And if you need help, reach out. Uh, take care. See you tomorrow.